Week six, problem three. All right, high voltage copper transmission line with a diameter of 2.5 centimeters and a length of 300 kilometers carries a steady current of 900 amps. If copper has a char free charge density of 8.46 times 10 to 28 electrons per cubic meter, over what time interval does one electron travel the full length of the line? All right, so this is talking about, I think it's drift speed. Let's look this guy up. Drift speed. Drift speed. Drift velocity is the flow velocity that a particle, such as an electron, attains due to an electric field. And it's really slow. So it makes sense that they're going to ask us this in years. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is look at amps. So amps is current. So if you do like hydraulic analogy, you think water flowing down the river, this is telling you how many molecules of water is flowing down. So looking at the de definition of an ampere, ampere, I think that's a coulomb per second. Ampere should I be confused with coulomb second? No, that's, <laughs> that's the thing I'm not supposed to be confused with. The ampere is equivalent to one coulomb per second, which is um, 6.241 times 10 to the 18th elementary charges, i.e. electrons. So I'm gonna first start by converting amps to electrons per second. The idea here is we want to get a velocity or speed, a speed of how fast the electron's moving, then we're going to find out how long it takes that electron to go 300 kilometers. So we have, actually I'll just start over here so I can have the 900, right, 900. So 900, so we have 900 amps hmm? times and then here we have the definition of 6.241 times 10 to the 18th. So we have 6.241 times 10 to the 18th electrons per second. And then we're going to multiply, oh, that's per ampere. There we go. Per ampere. All right, so that gives electrons per second, but what we really want is meters per second, so we want to get rid of those electrons. So this is straight dimensional analysis. So to get rid of the electrons, we're going to do 8.46 times 10 to the 28th. So I'm going to do it this way. 8.46 times, oh, not eraser, pen, pen, pen. 8.46 times 10 to the 28th electrons per cubic meter. All right, so that gives us now the electrons cancel, but now we have cubic meters and we want just normal meters. So to get rid of the um, cubic meters on top, we're going to divide by meters squared. And the way we're going to get meters squared is we're going to take the cross-sectional area of the um, of the wire. So we know that it is, it's a diameter, so we have 1.25, so pi r squared. So I'm going to do 1.25, which is the radius, squared, but that's in centimeters, which we need to do, convert that to meters, which is 10 to the negative second, but 10 to the negative second squared is 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, that seems reasonable. Oh, and I should put some units on that. That's meter squared. I'll put a one up here just so it doesn't look weird. Start doing some canceling. And I think that leaves us with meters per second. So do a little simplification here before we get carried away with the um, calculations. So this will be 10 to the 8th, 10 to the 10th. Uh, 18 or 28 minus 18 then this will be 10 to the 6th which will be 10 to the negative 6th on top okay so let's do 900 times 6.241 900 times 6.241 divided by, or, uh, yeah, divided 
divided by 8.46 8 8.46 times I think we had a pi times pi times 1.25 squared do we have anything else? nope and then this is going to be times 10 to the negative 6 so we're going to have 135 times 10 to the negative 6. Let's make sure I got that. 8.46 pi. Yep, that looks reasonable. All right, so now we have 135 times 10 to the negative 6. Pen, pen. I forgot the number. I forgot the number. 135. Times 10 to the negative 6. And that's meters per second. Now we need it in years, but I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. So I'm going to do then. I'm going to look at this through dimensional analysis. You can do the whole velocity equals distance divided by time formula. Solve for that, which is fine. Which is fine. But I'm just going to be like, all right. So now I'm going to take my 135. Nope, I'm going to take, I want, I want it in seconds. So I'm going to do one second per 135 times 10 to the negative 6 meters times, now we have uh, 300 kilometers. So it's going to be 300 times 10 to the third meters. Cancel, cancel. Now we're going to have to convert seconds into years. Now the way you can do it is do uh, 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day, 365 days per year, or 365.25, whichever makes you feel better. But the way I remember that is I just remember that there are seconds in a year. There are... Uh, maybe if I just do how many, how many seconds in a year. There are pi times 10 to the 7th uh, seconds per year. Now your physics, eh, you might not want to write that on a test. Especially don't use the pi symbol. That would be a little too obnoxious. But that's how I remember it. So I'm going to do, it's not actually pi, it's 3.14, but 3.15 is kind of close. So I'm going to do 3.15 times 10 to the 7th seconds per year and then let's see here so this is going to be 10 to the fourth 10 to the sixth it'll be 10 to the negative second which then is 10 squared on top so we're going to end up with 300 times 100 divided by 135 and here we have 222 that's a long time that is a long time 222 years so it'll take 222 years for one electron to get from one side of the transmission line to the other. And the idea here is that um, the fl actual flow of the, it feels like electricity is a, a instantaneous, or maybe it's not instantaneous, maybe speed of light, quick. It feels like electricity is very quick. Well, what happens is the electrons bumping into each other and affecting the other electrons down the line is quick, but the actual movement of the individual electrons by themselves is actually re reasonably slow. So. That is the idea. It's because each electron that passes through your, the transmission line basically gives you power, and there's a lot of electrons. And each electron gives you a reasonably large amount of power, considering how small it is. So that is the idea. Um, drift speed. All right? That does it for problem three. On to problem four.